Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Mad Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I am going deep into the inner recesses of your wet noodle, and I am going to ask you questions. Nope, you're going to ask me questions. I'm going to answer them. Here we are. So today, we are going to answer questions that you guys have. Um, I got a couple more over the last uh, 24 hours, and we will try to get into those as well. All right, so here we go. First off, all of you lovely people who have been leaving five-star reviews, meaning hurry the fuck up, um, get on that, and I appreciate it. You're awesome, and you guys are great, and I appreciate all of the letting people know about this show. I've been noticing uh, the people who listen to this show based on what other shows you listen to. Like, I get that shit in the iTunes thing, and it's awesome to see kind of how it's spread out. That's great. All right, so let's get on with this. So the first thing we always do here is we know what side of our bread is buttered. And we make sure that you know what side of our bread is buttered. Because the butter is the thing that makes the bread not taste like crap. Okay? The butter is the wonderful, greasy goodness that is the thing that keeps us going. So, in order to do that, I want to start off by giving all of the shout outs. And so, first off, I want to give the shout outs to the lovely folks over on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Chase, to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys a ton. Now, over to the thank you crew, the bottom tier on the YouTube channel i have at matt wall where you can watch this podcast and see me and all of my glory meaning my hair looks like cthulhu's mouth it's all fucking tentacles right now i don't know what the fuck's going on but i want to give a thank you to patrick to brit to jh you guys are fucking awesome i appreciate you thank you so much and now for the big mother effing Shout outs over to the Anarchy crew. I want to give a thank you to to Buddy, to Nate, to Mindy, to Hannah, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Alan, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, and to Andrew. <gasps> oh my God, that is so hard to do, but I love the fact that it takes me so long to say all your names because you guys are fucking awesome. I appreciate you. And then top appreciations go out to our number one chappy over at the chat book of the month club, the tier above the anarchy crew, which also gets all videos over a hundred of lessons and workshops and articles, not articles, assignments and shit like that. Plus daily writing prompts and other stuff like inclusion in the Poetic Anarchy Volumes, Volume 3, I just placed my final proof order in. After spending all morning fixing the stupid idiotic mistakes I made to begin with. But that's not about all that. We're back to talking about the number one chappie. We got to say thank you. We have to. It is our job. We must. We must tell the SDG. Thank you so much. Love it. Thank you. You are a fucking pleasure. Just so you know. So if you want to join Chapbook of the Month Club, if you want to join the Anarchy Crew, if you want to join the Thank You Crew, go over to youtube.com slash at Matt Wall. Or if you would just like to show your patronage by jumping over on Patreon, you can do that too at patreon.com slash Matt Wall. But now, on with the motherfucking show. So questions, let's get into the fucking questions. Thought I wrote them down here. Aha, question. This was a riveting, deep-thoughted, fucking deep-thoughted, deep-thoughted fucking question from um, one of our closest friends, 
in the community, Ethan McGuire. Um, he asked basically, what kind of coffee do you like? Okay, now here's the deal. Over here, I have an espresso machine. And I sometimes get whatever espresso I can get my hands on. But it's usually, I think, Cafe Busto. I don't know if that's right. Um, it's It comes in a brick. And you get that everywhere. You could get it at any fucking store. So it's just an easy go-to thing. I do like all kinds of fancier things, too. Just to be fancy. And I usually will start the morning off with some espresso. Um, or I will just add a shot of espresso to what I normally drink, which is instant coffee. I drink instant coffee because I'm fucking impatient and I just turn the kettle on and I don't even get it hot. I just get it warm because I'm going to pound this fucking shit. So I'll take a spoonful of instant, some warm water. Dude, I used to just do tap water. I would just put on the hot tap and just get whatever I got and just pound, spoon, tap, fill, pound, down, spoon, tap, back. Like, I would just do that three or four times just to get the blood going. But, um, yeah, so I drink it out of, and you can't see this on the audio feed, but um, my go-to coffee mug is my Band Books coffee mug that has all of these names of Band Books. So we have Catch-22, The Origin of the Species, 1984, um, and Tango Makes Three, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, Hook Finn, Howl, Satanic Verses, Tropic of Cancer, Lady Chachelis Laba, Madame Bovary, um, Naked Lunch, Animal Farm, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Les Mis, Lolita, um, an essay concerning humane understanding, um, Dialogo, something the catcher in the rye and finally ulysses um and this mug is from the unemployed philosophers guild which i think is all of them so um yeah so they have some great stuff um i think they also did my vonnegut mug i'm not 100 percent on that but i fucking love this mug it's a great mug i like it a lot all right so and as far as the instant coffee goes I've had um, Starbucks Instant. It's not the best. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, Nescafe is seriously the way to go. I think that's probably just standard shit. Um, there's one that I have right now. What's it called? A spot of something? Hang on. One of the perks is what it's called. Taster's Choice is okay. Like if you're at Costco and you can't find anything else. Oh, and then if you start going into, like, the Mexican shops and stuff like that, you could get Cafe Legal, um, which is really tasty, but it's because they add um, caramel to it. So it's like um, there's sugar in it. Um, so there's that. And then um, if you're in any of the more Asian towns around or shops, you can get Capico. I think you get that at most places now, but... Um, that's like if you are, oh shit. My espresso machine's been on for hours. I just had to turn it off. Um, no, but Capico, it's like um, coffee, cream, and sugar, like all in one little pack. That shit is like crack. So, but I drink my coffee black, so I don't really notice it. In fact, I'm gonna get some. So while that's heating up, I'll tell you. This, it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm on, I think, my 8th cup for the day. I've been trying to keep track of it because I've been doing intermittent fasting now. So everything I drink, um, any liquid or anything like that, obviously, you don't drink solids, um, I put down in my app so it shows me my water intake because um, I'm supposed to drink like 70 ounces of liquid a day, and everyone told me that um, coffee doesn't count. But according to this, it does count. So, like, if you have a 12-ounce cup of coffee, it gives you, um, like, 9 ounces of liquid, which is pretty cool. So, but because I drink so many fucking cups of coffee a day, I almost hit my um, water goal just on coffee. But I've been drinking um, one of these of water every day. So, this is 24 ounces. Um, but normally, I have two. So... Um, that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. 
So, good question, Ethan. What kind of coffee do you drink? Tell me all about it. Ethan actually wrote me an email. Let me let me read that since I just remembered that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was talking to Ethan about some um, kind of. I got to actually write him back because I'm not going to talk about this on the show. But um, some personal stuff that I got in the pipeline here um, that I haven't really made public yet. So um, we'll be talking about that shortly. But this was actually pretty good here. So he says, regarding your comments on health care and health insurance, the comments just anger me. And that I am angry things are this bad. I work in cybersecurity for a healthcare company. My department, leadership, and coworkers are, in all honesty, really good. But I look around and see that their healthcare practices suck for the most part, like everyone else's. It's almost like they're incentivized to suck. Ah, oh, dude, tell me about it. I don't even know where to start. I had two doctor's appointments yesterday. One was with a fucking nutritionist, and then I told her everything I was doing, and she was like, oh, well, this all this all sounds great. I guess I'll see you in a month. And I'm like, are you fucking with me? Did we just, like, you're getting, what? Oh, my God. So there was that. And then my other appointment was with my fucking surgeon. I still haven't got my fucking MRI yet. So, like, instead of canceling the appointment with me, and it was supposed to be a Skype thing for us to go over my MRI... But because the MRI didn't come in, instead of just canceling the appointment, there was just no call. And so, and it was at the end of the day. So then by the time I'm like, dude, he's not showing up. I call and I'm not paying attention to the fucking clock. I just know I have to be here at this time. I call and their office is already closed. So I haven't even like figured all that shit out yet. So whatever. And then he says, I got to be honest. I do find your classic opinions a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you frame it in kind of an inarguable way. So um, that that's awesome. Like, and, and that's the thing. Like, dude, like anyone could like anything. You don't have to like things because people tell you you like them. And I know that's not exactly what he's saying here at all, but it just goes on to the whole thing. Like when you argue something based on personal preference and taste, you can't argue that. And with a lot of poetry, especially, people argue it in a sense of science or math or um, absolutes that, like, just, like, to me, do not exist in art because it's all personal taste and preference. But that's fine. Um, and, and the same thing is, is if you love those classics, that's awesome. And I want you to love those hard. Because that's what you're into. So fucking be into it. Like, I like a lot of shit that people hate. Like, one of my favorite movies is Pink Flamingos. I got fucking Divine up here on the fridge. You know? Like, I like a lot of crap that most people wouldn't like. You know? But that's fine. Anyway. Um, I also know what you mean... Oh, wait. I also know what you mean about what you like in literature and don't. Because I'm actually super, super picky about which poems I like and don't, even among some of my favorite poets. I may only have a certain number of poems that I love, just those are so damn good they blow my mind. Um, Amit Majmadar is that way for me, and I talked about him on the last episode, um, for a contemporary poet. Robert Frost is that way for me, for an old poet. In the end, with hate mail, isn't anyone hating on you just playing into your I hate Matt Wallhand? Oh, yeah. Like, if people do, like, I don't know. I don't give a shit. Like, what did Bella Lugosi say? I'm sure other people had said it, but any publicity is good publicity. Um, and just, like, with, like, YouTube and social media and stuff, you get as much traction for dislikes, like, thumbs down, as you do for likes. Okay? It's... That's like as long as people are engaged in talking about what you're doing, people love it and like there will be shit about it. It's when there is nothing, when things are just nothing happening. That's when shit's bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather people hate me than people not care. You know what I'm saying? Okay, 
So thank you, Ethan. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to make my day a little brighter. That's fucking awesome. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Questions. Oh, um, this question um, was a, a bit weird. Um, this is from... I can't remember if this was from Jessica or if this is from Alan. Ooh. I think both of you guys asked me this question in different ways. But basically, the question is, where do you start with the Anarchy Crew? Like, when you join the Anarchy Crew, what the fuck are you supposed to do at that point? Go to the Poetic Anarchy playlist in my YouTube feed. Or if you go to PoeticAnarchy.com, that'll take you to the five-day workshop. Once you watch those videos, there's, like, at the bottom of that thing, you could click that to take you to the playlist of all the Poetic Anarchy videos. And they're numbered. So start from one and just keep going. But realize that every two or three videos, there's going to be the um, weekly live stream video in there as well. So as you go through it um just you know make sure like if it doesn't have a number don't go oh i'm not going to watch this because the weekly live stream stuff is really cool because a lot of times those live streams are me going over what everyone's done this week and um or whatever week that is so when there's a lot of assignments and shit and people have to turn stuff in that's when that um really starts kicking and um it's, it's great. So that was a quick and easy question there for you guys. Okay, now this question, I don't remember who asked. There's two questions here that I don't remember who asked because I was just pulling questions out of the comments and putting them into this pad and I didn't get the name. But somebody out there in internet land asked how to repurpose content. And this is a really cool question because there's so many different ways you can do this. And, oh, this might be Lisa because Lisa was just telling me about something they were going to do today. I don't know. I won't say what Lisa's going to do because it's kind of cool and I don't know how many people are doing that. So I'll leave that one off. But we could talk about other ways to repurpose content here. So right off the bat, let's say you're writing poems or you're writing short stories and you're posting them on Instagram or posting them on your website or whatever. Well, right off the bat, wherever you're posting them, make sure that at least within a week or two, like maybe even a month of you posting a poem or a story on your website, that if it doesn't go right away, have it go like a little bit later to your social media. And if you even want to see, depending on how your analytics on your website work, depending on what site you use, stagger the social media releases too. So you can see which social media platform you're getting the most traction on. So post it on Twitter one week and see how that goes. And even if it's like a link back to your website, you know what I'm saying? So it's on your website and then like a month later you post it to Twitter a week later, you post it to Instagram. A week after that, it goes to Facebook and all this other shit. So right there, you're repurposing the content because you're kind of repurposing the audience more than the actual content. The content's the same. The content's at the same place, but you're showing it to a different set of eyes. And for from my experience, social media gives you different results. So like, I have more engagement on the stuff I post on Twitter, but I have more visits to my website from Facebook. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, I hate both of these fucking things. But Instagram dwarfs both of those. Like I get more engagement on Instagram posts than I do on Facebook posts or on Twitter posts. But still, the thing that pushes people, and it might just be because people on Facebook are generally more on their computers on Facebook than they are on their phone, I would assume. But you, there is more traction from Facebook to my site. So that's one thing to do. The next thing to do would be a mailing list. I sing the praises of mailing lists all the fucking time. And I don't even take my own advice that much. Um, once everything, it's so funny because once things get crazy for me, when I feel like I'm drowning, when I feel like the world's crushing me, the first thing that falls off the list every fucking time is my mailing list. So next week I'm 
going to be getting back into the mailing list game and trying to figure out um, different things to do for that. But now we're back to repurposing content. So if you have something on your site, are you kidding me? There's an airplane landing on my street right now. Give me a second. So if you have a mailing list, and if you guys have questions about marketing and mailing lists and shit, please send that my way. Send that shit to me. Your mailing list, because of what you are getting from people in return, your mailing list should always be the first place stuff gets posted. That's my opinion. Poems that I post on my website, those should be posted in my email, like newsletter. I would say a week to a month before it's posted on my site. That's usually what I try to do. If you have a Patreon, or if you have one of those like paywall substack things, or anything of that nature, I would say post stuff there first, because not only are these people giving you their email address, they're giving you their money. Okay, so treat them better. Then go to your email list, then go to your website, then go to your social media. So if you understand how I'm doing this here and talking to you about this, every single thing you create should have a life cycle, okay? And it should be tiered. And one poem could last you months of new content because the eyes that would see each thing will probably be different. It's hard for, unless you have like super diehard fans, that like if you post on your website, they know, social media, they know, mailing list, they know, Patreon, they know. Like, and those people aren't going to care. They're going to help support and they're going to tell everybody about it. So if you're showing them the same stuff all the time, they're probably already excited about it and telling people about it. You see what I'm saying? So I would say come up with a way to do that and then do that stuff. Now, here's another thing you can do. Well, well, this is just what I would say to do anyway. After a year of stuff being online, repost that stuff. So I know some people who do this on the same day every year. So the first of every year, the same post goes out. So something from their blog, they will post out like the next year on social media again. I, I don't know if you should repost it on your blog. I, I don't know, because like you're going to be pulling people in from that anyway. So I wouldn't do that, because then you just start clogging up, and when people are looking through your archives, it's all fucking a mess and jumbled. But with social media, after a year, you go back and you start giving these things like it's reincarnated poem time, okay? And you start doing that. Now, a lot of this stuff sounds tricky. sounds like a fucking lot of work. But if you use something like Hootsuite. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Um, things like this. You can schedule shit out months in advance if you have that much. So what I would say to do, if you already have a site that you've had for years or social media you've had for years, start going through that stuff and see if you could repurpose that shit to be posted again and start with that. And then as you start putting new stuff out there, do the new stuff the way I was talking about before. Like um, paywall people, newsletter people, website people, social media people. And then once you get to social media, depending on how much social media you have, um, stagger that stuff out, okay? So if you do this correctly, there's always something coming out. Now I go back and forth on this where like there'll be months where I'm like really hardcore into doing the repurpose and the stagger. And then like a project will come up and I take my eyes off the prize because I don't use things like Hootsuite anymore. I used to, and it was cool. And it just, honestly, it, it's like a few hours out of your day, like once a week to optimize all that shit. So if you have the time to do it, I highly recommend you do that. And hopefully I will start taking my own advice here in a little bit because I need to get back on that shit. Another thing you can do to repurpose your content is you can take stuff you've done, but like you got to see what the rules and terms and stuff are for a lot of these sites are. But there are some sites that you could post articles on and people pay to read them kind of thing. So if you want to like, if you have a post from a couple years ago that doesn't get any traction at all, but it's a good post, you think, then just like put that post to private 
for the time being and post that up on some other site like Medium or things like that and see if you can get paid for it. Another thing you can do is um, take all your blog posts, especially if they're about the same kind of thing. Now, this is if you're writing more articles and shit like that. But even if you're writing short stories or you're writing poetry, take all those, bundle them up into an ebook, and sell them on Amazon or go to um, Draft to Digital or Smashwords. I can't remember which one bought which, but you know, it's the same kind of thing. And sell them as an ebook. Put that out there. And if it's all like-to-like stuff, it should stick. You know what I'm saying? And then, God, if it's just a bunch of blog posts about, like, you journaling or something like that, if you have enough of it, you could put out a fucking, like, internet memoir, you know? So there's always ways to repurpose your shit. Another thing you can do, if you write short poems and you have some cool ideas, go on Redbubble or go on Teespring or Cafe Press or any of those places and take some lines out of your poems or some good quotes or something and you can put them on mugs and t-shirts and bath towels and dildos and all sorts of other shit. So that's really fucking fun. And if you're super artsy and you like handmade shit, take some of the things you've written and you could like print them out and then mod podge it onto some wood and put some like, I don't know, silk plant shit on it and some springs and a fake fucking bird. And now you have something grandma could hang up in her kitchen. And like the thing on it says like, I'm going to fuck your ass. But like grandma doesn't know that. She just sees the dead bird and the fucking mistletoe and she thinks it's something like, but this is the kind of idea. Just keep thinking of ways to repurpose your shit. T-shirts, you know, like whatever, like you can do anything. Okay. You just got to think outside the box. And then at the end of the day, Write a book and put the book out, for fuck's sake. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you for it. Next, what if you do not want to use social media? Okay, this is crazy because this is like the third version of this question that's come to me since I've been doing questions on here. And this one is from Buns. Okay, so I'll just say it. Now... Um, me and Bunny already talked about this today, and um, I hope I gave Bunny some good ideas on what to look into and shit. But if you don't want to use social media and you want to grow your audience, there are things that on paper sound like they would work, but in actuality don't really work that well. And take it, and it'll take you forever to do this, okay? Now, I'm gonna blow your mind here a little bit too. If you have the money to spend, you don't need to do social media. You wanna know why? Because you could hire PR firms to do that for you. Now, again, if you have the money to spend, you can do that. If you don't wanna do social media at all, you still need to have a place where people can find you because the world we live in, everyone has to have either email, website, social media, something. For people to be able to discover them or if they hear about somebody could look them up. So even if you don't want to post on Twitter, you should still probably have a Twitter until the new thing happens, whatever it is. Hurry up, Mastodon. Get fucking cracking. Make people like it. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. You need to have at least a presence there. And make sure the notifications are turned on. So if somebody like me, somebody hit me up on Instagram and I don't know how I missed this message, but it was someone I didn't know and they hit me up and they were from somewhere in Europe and they're like, hey, uh, I want to buy some of your books, but I wanted to buy bulk of your books for the shop I have. And I fucking didn't see that message and it's been sitting in my inbox for like three months because I don't check Instagram. And when I do check it, I hardly ever check my messages unless the notification comes up and I click the notification. So like I know the message is there right then. But like if I didn't see that notification, like I hardly ever just go into my inbox. And then because Instagram has a stupid thing where it's like you have a general mailbox and you have a primary mailbox. What the fuck is that? Just give me a fucking inbox. This is how shit gets fucking confusing and lost. I have too much to think about. I can't be 
thinking, what is happening with this wave I have right here? Is, is someone on a surfboard? I look like Eddie fucking Munster's dead fucking grandpa right now. I guess that would be Grandpa Munster. Fuck me. Okay, so you need to have something, okay? I would say a website is probably the best thing to have, So, and that way you can post stuff and all this other shit. But a lot of people don't want to fucking pay for a website. Now, there are things you can get and things you could do, and you could Google it. Like um, I said before, there used to be Blogger and Blogspot and Live Journal and Dead Journal if you're goth and all this other fucking shit. Um, Wattpad. Um, and there's all sorts of other things like Erratosphere and shit like that if you're into formal poetry and stuff. But like those things aren't great. Writing groups aren't great. And the reason is, is because most writers are the worst customers you can have. The reason being is that most writers are either writing for a hobby or they're writing trying to get their career going. If they're writing to try to get their career going, chances are they're broke asses, okay? If they're writing as a hobby, it's just a hobby to them and they got other shit to do. So trying to make other writers your your target audience it, you're going to lose every time. That's why there's so many people who will write a bunch of books, start a podcast about writing. Jesus Christ, I'm talking about myself right now. And then go, oh, wow, I'm still not selling any books. Why don't I just write a quick 10,000 word book on how to be a successful writer? And then boom, they're, they blow up and they, whatever. Um, and I'm kind of doing that too, but not for that reason. <laughs> Because honestly, um, I don't think the things I have to say will be anything that would make a large group of people go, oh, I need to buy that book. Um, I th I'm pretty sure that when my craft book comes out, it's going to have a very small cult audience. And then hopefully those people treat it like the fucking Bible or treat it like the Bible by people who believe the Bible. Um, if you treat it like the Bible but you're a Satanist, then who knows what you'd do with it. But I think you understand what I'm saying. So anyway, um, I, I can't remember how I got to where I was at, but you have to have some kind of presence. You, you just do. And Substack and Patreon might be a good way of doing that. But again, I don't know how the actual browse feature inside those sites work. Because I've never, I've had a Patreon for a bunch of different things ever since Patreon started. And I don't think I've ever gotten a patron on Patreon because they were on Patreon just browsing and searching. It's usually from traffic from outside. And um, I would say make sure you have a mailing list. Um, and then with that mailing list, you would need to have some sort of landing page to sign people up. But if you don't have any social media to let people know that you have a mailing list, then no one's going to sign up for your mailing list. So there are some necessary evils that you have to partake unless you want to pay somebody to fucking take care of that shit for you. So hopefully that question um, is pretty much solved now. Now, this question I think was from James. I think it was from James. But this one was, do you get paid for your books when they're on KU, Kindle Unlimited? The answer to this is yes, but not the way you think. And again, Amazon changes stuff all the time. So as of January 12th, 2023, this is how I think they'd be, they're, they'd be doing it. This is how I think they'd be doing it. You get page counts for page reads, okay? And then depending on what the um, Kindle Unlimited global fund or global pool is so if there are three million people signed up for kindle unlimited however that breaks down those pages get divided equally among everybody based on what how many pages were read and i think amazon um i can't remember if it's 250 words or 350 words make a page on Kindle or, or considered a page on Kindle. I can't remember, but um, something like that. So 
and it's it's somewhere from like one cent to three cents per page read or something like that. So um, if you have a short book, um, it kind of sucks because you're not going to really hold people in. I mean, you could hold them in, but if the book's only 20 pages long, then like whatever. But if you have like a 350 page book, you know, holding them in will end up, you know, giving you a little bit of a profit there. So it just depends on how that works, but you don't have to enroll your books in KU if you are on Kindle. Like you don't have to be exclusive to Amazon. You don't have to be exclusive to Kindle Unlimited, but you do get um, paid through page reads. All right, now, oh no, Josh, you got strep throat. Get well, <laughs> get well, dude. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, that sucks. I'm going to try to answer some questions that Andrew has sent in. And I don't know if Andrew does uh, speech to text or how he sends his questions in, but sometimes they're a little difficult to read through. I feel like he thought I was kind of letting him down on that end. And it, it wasn't that at all. It was just some of the questions were hard to um, figure out. Uh, so let me just let me see. Yeah, the one about dreams, a don't follow. Um, here's a question. Is And this is about um, author bios. Is third person to pretend others want to bio you? Or is this just um, something that you're supposed to do? Um, yeah, I don't know why this is the standard. But it just it's one of those things that it's always been like this. So this is the way it is, where um, when you're writing your bio, like so when I'm writing my bio, I say Matt Wall is blah, 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 okay? It always feels weird, and it's very much tooting your own horn, but you're trying to get people to know who you are as a person. So um, look at it like this, too. Look at it as if someone was introducing you to this reader. Hey, reader, this is Matt Wall. He has written a ton of shit and is a fucking renaissance man and has two dogs and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, think of it like that. Like, you're at a cocktail party. You know, that, that's a cool way to do that. Another question from Andrew. Can you be a cat person without cats? Possibly. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how this question is. How can publishing in one place, blog or magazine, not trying to network through submitting compare? Man, I don't understand this question either, dude. Um, sorry, bro. I don't know if you're asking, um, can you be publishing and not trying to network? Everything you do should be you trying to network. Like, if you're going to take this seriously, if you want to be a writer, every conversation you have should end up being some form of networking opportunity, you know? Um, and that might sound kind of shallow, but when you are your own boss, you know, like you got to do what you got to do. That's why like your friend's dad that owns a roofing company wears his roofing t-shirt every time he's at the grocery store. So if someone sees him in his roofing t-shirt that says Jay's roofing, they'll go, Oh, are you a roofer? And he goes, no, I just like wearing roofing shirts because, like, I meet a lot of hot chicks at the grocery store. Just kidding, old lady. Um, of course I'm a roofer. That kind of shit. So, yeah. So, in fact, I need to get more of my own shirts. I got to get on that. So, yeah. Josh, get better soon. Um, and for those of you who know PAX, um, my thoughts are with you. So, um I'll just leave that at that. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Andrew, I really hope that helps. And again, if you can like read through the stuff you type and kind of proofread it before you send it to me, that would be so fucking helpful. I, I read poorly at the best of times. So um, if it's just me, let me know. And that'd be cool. So anyway... So with the butt plugs today, um, oh, January 20th, I'm going to be, um, that will be, I think, next Friday, or this coming Friday when you hear this podcast. 
Um, I'm going to be the featured poet at the Garage Poets Open Mic Night. So I'm going to be reading for like 15 minutes-ish. Um, and hell, if there's a poem that you want me to read, make sure you send it to me. Like say, hey, I like this poem of yours. Make sure you read it. Because I have like maybe like uh, four or five poems that I've picked out. So if there's other ones that you could think of, definitely fucking let me know. And let's see. Um, join the Anarchy Crew if you haven't yet. Um, honestly, it's a fucking amazing thing and everyone loves it that's in it. I hope. There's probably two or three people that didn't like it very much. And if you want mentorship or any kind of career building or if you have a book launch coming up and you just want to like meet with me to go over the best way to make your launch go off well, let me know. This is what I do. This is what I'm here for. Keep my in my books. Oh, I said the new book. I haven't even finished it because I was doing the Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 thing today but i'm going to go um, make sure off the grid is all set up and ready to go so on the next podcast you will be able to see that oh blood rag issue seven that's selling really well all of a sudden not all of a sudden i just put it up the other day but um it's selling faster than any other issue the blood rag has so that is lovely so i like that so um yeah so just go over to my etsy shop and you can pick that up and other than that, I guess that's it. So keep buying my books, type hard, everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.